we are live and we're gonna laugh tonight we're gonna learn stuff tonight and we have mrs jenny whitley with the eye <laughs> that's right yes sub madden blyden on her way and we have brother elmo stout tonight to tell us stories um I expect to hear some long time slang, some words I have for a long time. And I want to I'm gonna learn some stuff tonight. Now on this program, I don't know who have programmed it, but it says poem by Sister Velma Chung. Um I ain't feeling poemish right now. Um but I know a story. A Jumbi story. <laughs> Who been in the yard or in the house and then they, they, they were scared to go home after hearing the, the story them tell. And um, excuse me, um, English my best subject, but I gonna forget that tonight. <laughs> so <clears throat> I heard this real story that said, right? There was this lady that had, um, she had a, a, a hog, a pig. So this night, the pig, um, all night the pig <laughs> making noise outside like a hook up or something, right? So she get up, she went out. Nothing didn't happen. It wasn't hook up or nothing. Next night, same story. She had a hog ball and going on. So she said to the hog, she said, last night you make noise, I get up, I come outside. Tonight you don't stay, up. <laughs> Them say she hear a voice say, you should have come out tonight. <laughs> I don't know if she fainted away or what happened, but that's what she hear, and she ain't bother with the hog again on next night. The first storyteller is Mrs. Jenny Whitley. So, if she's ready, she started to laugh already. <laughs> so that means, if she laughing, what's going to happen to us? And uh, you like the setting, uh, you know how it is like that? Comfortable, so we'll ask her now to start with her story. But it can fall down at any time I feel like throwing it down, I could okay. tell you that. You could drop the mic any time. Oh, so this one don't cost nothing. That's my mic, don't mess it up. Why is it, why is it, where? You see, you see this, is, this is the problem. You from East stand and they, they adopt you down, um, down here and you're you going to handle me? You even know you. What? Yeah. Ah, they want to hear that, so you ain't using the mic. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah, son of God. Okay, very much. Uh, well, I started off with some kind of jumbie story from down that way. But I know Stouty know a worse one than that. So I can leave that one for you, Stouty. That jumbie story, another one. <laughs> Stepping in the boat and thing, I'll leave in that for Stouty. Uh, let me go up east then. Um, right up near where people like Webb. They have some kind of land up there. And little command, little, uh, nowadays you call it Camino. We didn't know anything about Camino. We call our island Commanders. So we have little Commanders and great Commanders. And we had the best jumbi up there, but never mind. Ours was the gold tooth snake. Yes, the, the snake had in go had go had in gold teeth. And the, 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 as far as I know, they told me it was true. Whenever you go up there to steal the treasure that you know them other people from England and about had left it underneath the earth. Whenever you go up to steal the treasure, the gold tooth snake would just grin his teeth and man gone, everybody gone. 
So my grandmother said it was true. And then she said, no, uh, we have a better one on our own family. I said, well, I ain't taking nothing on my family, but let me hear it. She said that we had one story down by the Quaker burial ground. Now I know you heard me say that one already. It's written down in a book. Down by the Quaker burial ground had some money about down there by the, by the graves. Oh, young people, you know where the Quaker burial ground is? Young people, you know where the Quaker burial ground is? If you don't, not tell the teachers they ain't teaching you right. Because it's part of your history. Okay? Well, anyhow, you go up up your hand about up there. But my uncle decided that there was some money down there. And that we should go and, you know, go and get it. So he told my grandmother. And my grandmother said, she afraid to go. I, she, I, I, I afraid. I afraid to go. He said, girl, what do you? I got uh, my pickaxe, I got some Florida water. It, 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 that could take you any jumbi. Let's go. So she came down from all the way from East End, all the way down for Talks Bay. And now we're down, um, what you call the place there? I, people call it Maya Cove. That's nonsense. Hodges Creek. You know, I detest Ma Maya Cove. You know why? You know why? It was just a ship, a boat that Darwin let some, that some of you knew. Darwin let some used to clean the boat, make his little money for the family. The boat's name was Maya. And they gone and changed my thing to Maya Cove. I get angry, man. This Hodges Creek. That's who we are. Anyhow, they gone. So they started off good. It came all the way past Fat Hogs Bay, came all the way, all the way, all the way. All was well. So grandmother said, well, you know, not a big deal. Nah, this is no problem. We going to get our money tonight. Well, they went and to the spot. And uncle said, this is the spot. Let us dig. Grandmother said, you dig. You dig. I listening. Because if one of them told me said anything tonight, I got you know. <laughs> he said, girl, a stupid self, we got me rich for the first time. Poor people pens on me, then we got me rich. And so she said, okay, dig. And he went up and down. And he died. And then after a little while, the, the sound changed. Because now, all he's hearing when he went down the next time is pure water. He said, Lord Jesus, help me. Let's get out of here. There's a Jumbi country. And it didn't take, my grandmother had already left. <laughs> it didn't take any time at all to get back to East End because that is Jumbi country. Now the worst part of that story is this. My mother, she actually had a dream that told her, go down to that same spot, you're gonna find two chains. Carrie, and this is where she stopped. Carrie Joel Stevens' aunt, that's the family too. Put the chain around, the small chain around the child's neck, put the big chain around your neck, and just, it's going to be right there. The, the money's right there. And of course, my mother said, me, not me. And what all happened is that, you know, the people came around with the instruments that can find the money. And she actually had the privilege of seeing the hole where that money was taken out from. I said, well, mother, I mean, what happened? We could have been rich, you But she's had a few, my mother had a few things, and then they said, you know what you do? You won't do anything we say. 
DJ meeting, do you want to do anything? We say, you say about number. And so she said, oh, what about number? She, she was very sick this day. She went down the street in St. Thomas where they were selling the ticket. And she saw a piece of ticket. It was 1498. And she was born 1898. Saw the piece of ticket. And she only had enough money on her then to buy a little piece of it. You know that ticket was a grand prize? So I said, uh, Mother, what you're telling me is that you mess with Jumbies. <laughs> and as long as you plan to keep messing with Jumbies, I'm going to find some places to live. <laughs> she said, Girl, you're a real idiot. They are two kind of jumbie. I say, where are we going to go? Yes, she said, there are jumbies that protect you. And there are others that hurt you, would come for harm. So I said, what kind we have around this house? <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, of course, because you still live in here doing what you want. It's obvious that you got the kind that protecting you. I could tell you, and any night I used to be peeping <laughs> to, to see if I see one of them. And if I did, I was leaving. I really was leaving. So, well, my ain't enough story. It's not enough, but let me take a commercial break. Now you know the, the sale here is to benefit the the sign for the church here. And on sale we have fish, fried stew, chicken wings, chicken legs, salt fish, butternut squash soup, corn on a cup, coleslaw, johnny cakes, fresh dumb bread, bush tea, juices, water. So you don't pay a dime to come in here and sit down. So just um, please support the kitchen in the inside. Please, thank you. If not, I can pick up a collection if I ain't see nobody buying nothing inside. <laughs> All right? So, Sister Whitley, take another, another crack at it, and then after that, we have a little entertainment by Zion Song. And the Jumbi story real, you know. The real, real, because let me just tell you about all oh, Jumbi or the Caribbean. That's a real thing. I had, yeah, the two cousins, older men, right? And the Jumbi. Now the Jumbi ain't gave you the thing, don't go. The Jumbi gave this one telling where the, where the money was, right? So he was a little shy or scared or something, coward. So he said he carried the next cousin with him. So he carried the cousin and they tell him, they tell, they don't tell you where you're going to meet. They tell him they're going, he's going to see a pipe. Okay? You're going to see a pipe, don't you? So I, when I heard the story, I said, what kind of pipe will make me run from a chest of money? Okay? Anyhow, the gun, they went in the night and they dig the money, right? And when they see the pipe, the one said, uh, just what a pipe, and he took off. And by the time they think the water had started to cover the chest. I said, what kind of pipe would Deprive me of a chest of money. Well, how that pipe and look? I up to this day still asking people, what a, what is what kind of pipe a smoking pipe? What kind of pipe? You know how big or if it had a face? I don't know what happened, but when he saw the pipe, they run and the last they didn't get the money anymore. So anytime the me tell you thing, listen to them. Well, in my opinion, I tell enough story. So, um, somebody so I just got started. Hallelujah, send the glory. Velma, where are you? You're not this far back. At any time. You see, this is the trouble when I don't bring my things down here to all you. This flower bag was given to me more than 10 years ago by one of Reverend Seymour's very special friends, the old lady. 
I can't call her name because her daughter say, if I, her daughter ever know that she gave me the flower bag and not the daughter, and we ain't calling names, it would be one to Ria. I need a mic holder. You go hold up the bag, it is you. So you gave the test. I must smell Cena already show up herself. I show her, she gonna tell me, I have pillowcases made from those, and I have this, and I have that, and I have the other. You wouldn't be surprised to know the kind of show off Miss Melcina did on me before you reach here. Yeah. <laughs> and, plenty, and I have my boat. And the next thing I hear, I told her, this is a sample of my grandfather's boat. You know, Bim. The, the, the Captain Bim, who had a 30 something children. Keep out my business. Uh, uh, and, and, and so forth and so forth. This, these are different things are brought. But talk to me now in that. Um, and, uh, now, now young people. I don't know any old people, man. I'm tired of these old people. My angel here. Come, my angel, come. Come, come you, you. The, the old people, I, I, I wear it. I wear it into them. I like it. I out with my child. This is the thing. I like it. Um, what I look like to you, baby? What I look like? It look like a tablecloth. That's a good idea. Uh uh Look at thing here. I'm going to have a tablecloth out this thing. You know what used to be in it? Uh, yeah, how you know that? Understand that Miss Melcina bags now coming from Trinidad. But this is one of the real bags. That original superior 98 homes, very best. Raymond Hadley Corporation, New York City, New York. And then you come to Tartola, soft with flour. And I don't remember what that word is there below. And it's superior, very best flour. It, you, you, it, it got washed out. Don't, don't worry, darling. What, what it said there? I know what that says, but I know what that says. What it says? It's for export only. Oh, it's for export only. So it means that those people up yonder ain't using this flower. They're sending it down there to kill her, are we? That's the whole problem. That, you see what I mean? And Velma, don't bother to hug up my bag. I could auction that bag for plenty money, along with my frock. The frock somewhere. But if I do that, I ain't gonna get much money. I wait until the price go up. So there's no auction on the bag tonight. There's no, Velma with the frock. With the frock or somewhere and something. From the time she met me at church here, some up Wednesday morning, holy, holy, made the church. And I had her on this. And Wilma decided she want my frock. You see, darling, child? Do, do a little more reading there for the old lady there. Oh, Father. This went through Oma, Maria. It's about 20 years old, I believe that frock is. And you see? You see what I mean? I'm a, I'm a, my poor pre -pre premier, um, tell him howdy for me, who I taught in school, now has he defending this thing, you know? I said, well, look at thing here. I have my first premier, and he up there defending this British Virgin Islands, now all kind of people up in all kind of nice places. You see? And you see what it has on? You see all the names of the places? What? Uh, he, uh, you see Great Commanders? Oh, they have it named Kamenado. And Anigado, oh, my great grandmother from Anigado. 
all kind of thing on the frock. There was a time and that was sold in Road Town, just by the side, beside the post office. And if, if you are old enough to know that, you gotta be mighty old. I see some head shaking. If you remember when they used to sell that, you gotta be mighty old. And some of your choirs actually used to um, have it printed when they're going away to different places. Thank you very much, young man. You are super, 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 super. But you don't think I did enough work? Good night. If you need me again, I will come on and say something with Elmo. Madeline, I'm bad on it. She, she a pen from East End. I'm bad on it, Madeline. That, 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 you know, she, she carried the blind now, but she's a kind of breed from up East End ways. So, I, so she and Webb, they're not on my list tonight. So I go into, uh, what you say you have, you have some kind of soup? Ha! I shall eat what I feel like. I have no dietary restrictions. Let's thank Sister Whitley. Let's give her a round of applause. One, two, up. You ready? <laughs> you ready to go? Tell me you know. Up. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Don't move up yet. Don't move up yet? No, it'll be. I got to take a while. <laughs> I'm speaking for myself. Okay. Now we should be hearing a little something from the Zion songs. Thank you. Take warning. You better take warning. Take warning. You better do good. Let your light shine bright Let your light shine right Respect your fellow men As you should Let me hear you now Take warning You better take warning Take warning You better do good Let your light shine bright Let your light shine right Respect your fellow men As you should I said the evil that men do Live after them The evil that men do Live after them The evil today Will blight you tomorrow Do good today And avoid the sorrow Take warning You better take warning Take warning You better do good Let your light shine bright Let your light shine right Respect your fellow men As you should Take warning, take warning, you 
better do good Let your light shine bright Let your light shine bright Respect your fellow men Quite a bit, quite a bit of people came in since we began so I want to welcome those who came after the official welcome and let you know that this this is a fundraiser in aid of the the bulletin that's going to be that the Oma took and was standing right here in, in the next to the church. You're getting free storytelling. You're getting free music. I had a banjo talking up there. I gonna pay for that. Something gonna go in the basket tonight. Okay. Teacher Elmo, you ready? Are you still drinking? Okay, I don't know about me. If you, you want to take a little, you're cool? Yeah. All right, bring her on, let's go. Ayo, good night. Good night, Ayo. Uh, you know why this place is called Joe Bigot? Are you don't know why? Up to when Webb came up, Jumbi got to live with Jumbi. Them were right there outside the window, he could touch them. <laughs> and don't ask about when Kiss Up went up there. He could have heard them walking down the steps, they like, man, whoom, whoom. Webb said all he had to do is put some light. And because of modern times now, Ain't no Jumbi got no more. It used to be. Plain God. <laughs> Jenny, where you are? Where Jenny is? Oh, okay. Good night, Mrs. Whitley. The story that I'm going to tell for us happened right on this here church compound. Sometime around the 1930s. You know the Methodist ministers used to be the education officers and the managers of the schools. So they used to come around on the Wednesday time. If you had to marry, it's a Wednesday time you would be married in this district. You understand? And the same Wednesday time is when they used to christen them illegitimate child. You think this joke is true? So this particular Wednesday, a certain fellow from Carol Bay was about to be married right in that church. The children had to turn the school into a church, move the desk, fix it in a rush, and everybody outside, quiet, quiet. Ain't like nowadays, children will be skittling and making noise. Them big men and women were quiet, just like dough mouse. The wedding is about to begin. The bride and the groom standing in front of the minister. And the minister say, say after me. And the groom say, say after me. <laughs> the minister take a little pause. He step back. Say after me. And the groom says, say after me. My grandfather died in 36, so it had to be wrong in the 30s, right? He went up to the minister. He was the sexton. He said, Rev. Give me a minute with the gentleman. Please. So he brought him outside the vestry. He was right there. And he coached him for a little bit, you know. So I mean, so when the minister says, after me, keep your mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> then he went in. And he understood the thing. If he didn't get, if the minister were getting angry, angry, he wouldn't have been married, man, all of that goat meat and that pork and that whole cow would have got to waste. Because them days when fellows marry around here, the, groom, the bride had a wedding for a whole week. 
and the next week I'd belong to the groom. My child, you want to see about how things used to be? Everybody from the village bringing this, that, and the other. Things like nowadays, them gone, go marry by the, by the, when are going to marry? <laughs> by the register. <laughs> the next story is about digging old Spanish gold. Now all of you know that this place is full of gold. I mean, sometimes I just think, Lord, I should come and say, boss, I'm willing to give you so and so. But none of them Jumbi won't come. But spirit came to people already in the Virgin Islands, gave them the money, told them where it was, and people went and dig it. But the white people them, they don't get them know where the money is from long. They got a map. They just come to the village, they take out the gold and gone. Choo, choo, choo. But listen to this one. A certain family from down here, so <laughs> got some property on an island up there, so <laughs> no way got some money on the island, so they decided to go in a boat to try to dig this money. On a you don't dig money in the daytime. I don't know why. I would have preferred to go to day. Because the night time there's so many square things. <laughs> but the captain dropped the people on the beach and they walked to the vicinity where they were about to dig the money. The digging start. They saw the chest. One woman said, Tila la. <laughs> Something happened when she said that. Hell broke loose that night. When the captain looked up the beach, he see the lantern them swinging from side to side coming. <laughs> People running, running, coming, trying to get away after them jumbi way. My child, he pick up the people and he decide he ain't, he ain't trafficking from so come straight down western. He gonna go towards Tatola in case the jumbi them do something. He will be close to Tatola land and could swim sure. Nothing then happen. Pack up the boat. Next morning, when he come, the boat flat to the ground, sink. <laughs> Bela do everything. Next day, she sink. Bela put on dry dock, check for leak, not a leak, she sink. <laughs> Every time he come back to this boat, she sink. So he decided to get rid of this boat. He sell it to a fellow up east. This boat nearly drunk the man, nearly killed the man, leave the man in the middle of the ocean. People had to save him from the boat. The spirits were in the boat, but he couldn't see the boat. See, they couldn't see it. They couldn't see the spirit. And that's a true, who here know that story? All right. True, true. Dig in Spanish gold again. This time on Just Sunday. I was teaching on Just Sunday in 1971-72. Michelle, I didn't come home that weekend. I was working at school, so I came down to the house where I was living about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And Marty, where he lived, had two kitchens, a special one for special preparation of food and ordinary kitchen. But when I came, it had food all over. I was going to pick a little piece. He said, no, 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 no. That special food, don't touch there. <laughs> she said, that food there is for Christian Vanterpool. He was the man digging some money up Little Jasper Dyke. He owned part of Little Jasper Dyke and the government owned part. Lots of money over there. So she was cooking... Everything white, white duck, 
white fowl, white goat, white sheep, white cow, white rice, white potato, everything was white. It was like whitening. When she finished cook, a fellow named Denzel Davies, we call him Rat, he stole all of that food in a whale at 21 foot, bung for little Jason Dyke. When the food reached there, they took out a portion of the food, fill a small dinghy, decorate it, and just release it. And that dinghy went out the channel like a man was staring it. The rest of the food was sit down there on the ground. The workers and the spirits were eating together. The food was just disappearing. After the food disappeared and the, and the rum disappeared, they went to dig. When they got half, we digging. By the way, he had a woman from Haiti who was an Obea woman. <laughs> she told him she could get the money. But when he looked while they were digging halfway, she went like in a frenzy. Her frock over her head. So he asked her, what, what, what happening? She said, the spirit said them was soul. <laughs> when the news reached to the place where them boy was digging, a soul, whose soul? My soul? Each man asking if them soul. Well, they asked foot help the body. The brain sent a message and the foot then respond and them buy whether they were barefoot or had on shoes. You know, little Jason Dyke is about from here to the corner right there. About 200 yards from big Jason Dyke. If it's low water, the water reaches you here. And if it's high water, it reaches you here. It was low water. Man them buy walk on the water. You want to see man running? It had a fellow had in two sets of false teeth. They were going cluck, 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 cluck. Pure fright. My good friend Tony Martin was there. He had just enough energy to reach any mother home and drop down. All she could say to Tony, I tell you, keep from Christian Ventapool. One fellow got lost. They found him wrong 11 o'clock the Sunday morning. He was up in a tree like he was stick on. Couldn't get him come down. And all these are factual information. Hear this one. My child, you're not just like how fellows sit around nowadays and talk stupidness or discuss the issues of the day. Well, around the 1940s, some men were sitting in Carrot Bay talking about life after death. And this fella said, so and so, and another said, so and so. But this particular one said, my son, when I die, I want to be buried upside down, okay? Well, the time came and he died. People from all over West End, the Towers, Carrot Bay, Cane Garden Bay, Long Bay, Frenchman's Key, the hillside, some walk, some road, and some came in rowboats from Cane Garden Bay because he was going to be buried in Carrot Bay. The coffin is over the grave, sitting on two pieces of sticks. The rope is under there, and the four men are about to lift the coffin. They began lifting the coffin, and had Jugung one rope slip. And the coffin went down, upside down. <laughs> Hear them old woman over there, that's a bad old man, fixy, fixy. <laughs> Hear them old man over here, he says so. <laughs> Leave we stay, that's what the man want. 
So it had a controversial thing there. Fix it or leave it. What to do? Two grave diggers from Cain and me jumped down the grave and turned the man in the usual way. Then them old men start muttering. Now that's a bad woman. <laughs> the singing had stopped. It was hard to start again. But some strong soprano voice from Bellis Ben can get me to hear them. Blessed I show. <laughs> and the singing start. They bury the man. A few minutes after, everybody start walking up to the bay where the boats from Cane Gan Bay drop off their passengers earlier. And the Cane Gan Bay people are going to go back. The two grave diggers are there. They are going in a rowboat to the, the, the funeral goers. Two rowboats bound for Cane Gan Bay. A little girl who could see spirit said to the people on the bay, but look the man who we bury. Look at her going in the boat. <laughs> Nobody ain't study the girl. Everybody going King Gan Bay rowing. You know, engine is rowing boat. Can you see the colors? Wow. Instead of them rowboat go right up the deep channel and come wrong King Gan Bay. They gone in by Andal Pan gone through a reef. One reef hook up in the boat keel. Jugung boat capsized. Two men drunk. Who drunk? The two grave diggers. It had people that related to the Dawson who were so short. And then walk a show. And them two grave diggers drunk. If you had anybody in the audience who was old enough, they would remind you that around nine o'clock in the morning, they were being buried because all night the carpenters built the coffins, dug the graves, had a wake, and the two fellows were buried the next morning. Factual information. They won't fuck, they won't give the man a wish. Anybody here want to bury that way? <laughs> Hear this one. My child, when fellows leave school from that school long time, ain't had much work to do. You either cutting bush for goat, planting provision, burning charcoal or fishing. The fella who might have got a high certificate and he wanted to do it might have become a pupil teacher for 10 or $20 a month. Rich? <laughs> That's true. Ten many people had $20 a month. But some fellows went to St. Thomas as sailors on the sloops which plied from here to St. Thomas or St. Croix weekly. You have to understand this thing. Tartola had so much food that they supplied the U.S. Virgin Islands with all the provisions, fish, and meat. Livestock went to St. Thomas. You couldn't carry dead animals or meat, right? Livestock. Because that was the way life was, an agricultural community. This fella went to St. Thomas selling coal. He was about 14 years old. You couldn't sell all your coal on the waterfront. And you didn't want to leave it with the people in St. Thomas because sometimes they tell you the market bad and they take all the money. So you would take your bag of coals on your shoulder and you're selling Westergada, Gold Street, Hospital Ground, all over the place. And this fellow has his coal on his shoulder and he can't out, Coal from Virgin Garda. <laughs> coal from Virgin Garda.
call from virgin God. So, he reached Vesta Gada. He sell off all the coal. Gone back for another bag. Coal, come get your coal from Virgin Gada. A lady watched him full in the face. She said, Mister, who you is? He said, I is a crab from Virgin Gada. <laughs> he sell off that bag and he went back for the next bag. And he keep bowling. You know, Virgin Gala coal was the best coal in the Virgin Islands. And the reason why is because it was the hardest coal based on Amarat wood. We didn't, Tartola didn't have the volume of Amarat like Jasmine Dyke and Virgin Gala. But Virgin Gala coal would sell. So once they hear coal from Virgin Gala, it's going to be sold quickly. So the third bag, she, 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 she watched him, she said, Mr. You ain't Manuelita, son and Samuel Jacobs. <laughs> he didn't deny that. He said, yes, ma'am. He said, if you, once, you do, do me, once you know me so good, give me two dollars, let me buy coffee. <laughs> but he was using propaganda from those times to sell his product. Uh, it's just like you hear on the television nowadays. This is better than this and so forth. And I think he was doing a very good job. I must tell you this one well on my feet. It's about Tampo. Tampo is renowned or was renowned for being one of the strongest men in the British Virgin Islands. And he came from Bellevue. He too was selling charcoal in St. Thomas once. And when he carried a bag of coal, it wasn't an ordinary can bag of coal. It's what we call a cruder bag. A cruder bag is them big sinked sugar bag. So this man got this heavy coal on his shoulder. Or on his head, but he, he using one hand to hold it. Here comes a boxer from St. Thomas who had just returned from the state. Saw this man with this big bag of coal and this big block man. And he hit him thump, pop, 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 like a punching bag. Thump was said, my son, go sit down. <laughs> go sit down. But he keep hitting thump, pop, 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 pop. Go sit down. He, then thump get back, he said, if I could catch you one. If I could catch you one. Tampo swinging, but he ain't catching. <laughs> because the fellow fast. Happens so Tampo connecti one. Dong house, tree rib broken. <laughs> fellow hospitalized. Okay? Hear this one about Tampo. St. Thomas had a special room in the apothecary. The apothecary was between Main Street and Back Street. On the Back Street side, there was a room. Looked like it was dedicated for the BVI men who would meet on a Friday and a Saturday night to play domino, drink the rum, tell jokes, and talk about the different things happening. A fellow from Seacrest Bay called Dolly Christopher, old Dolly, he was a rude boy too. When Tampo come in, the table had on a good quad bottle of rum. You know those fellows used to carry a collapsible glass, a glass made out of metal rings. You open it and you push it up or you close it and you put it in your pocket. Every man had him glass. So when Tampo opened his glass, he threw out a rum. A shot then, right? But when fellows going to drink rum, they don't drink that first rum. He put it in the mouth in your... <laughs> he, he, he wash out his mouth. He get his taste buds ready. When Dolly see him do that, he know now Tampo going for the restroom. <laughs> when Tampo hard for the rest of the room to try it, 
Oh, Dolly, fly, fly across the table to get a bottle. Tampa just gave a push. <laughs> Went through the bottle them. Tam Dolly ended up with a big, a large lump inside here. Internal bleeding like a candy. Up to when he died, he had a thing like a candy in his mouth. So when they asked Tampa, well, why you hit Dolly so hard? He said, that only the breeze. That only was the breeze from my hand. Okay? That only was the breeze. You know, long time, you used to hear about old bear man and old bear woman, right? But they used to hide, right? You couldn't go call a woman old bear woman as old bear man. You're drunk. My child. This virgin God of fella, he was a Leonard. This tall virgin God of fella coming down Millionaire Street one day, met a woman who was so called Obia woman. To her face, call her Obia woman. Well, she put him in court. You know, each village has a bush lawyer. A fella worked study law, but he didn't go to school. But he good. So old Leonard went to an old fella in Virgin and said, Sir, I call this woman an old, an old bear woman. She put me in court. Now what do you think? What I should say? How I should plead? Old fella said, Boy, you are a tall fella. You tall like a horse. Look, when you go to court, Tell the judge as she was passing you, she look at you and said, look at that tall horse. <laughs> and you look back at her and say, you old bear. <laughs> he won the case. Um... The lady who is um, Ann Leonard, she's, I think she's the cultural officer. She, it was her grandfather. Um, he won the case. So you see the, some of the bush lawyers are very good. Um, you know, all of those boys from Western and Seacoast, they used to go to court when high court convened in the BVI. And they wanted to know what's happening. When the, them boys were staying there a week, every day they're there. You come out, you ask them, how the case going? All them tell it is a serious case. <laughs> I think I'm going to tell you a, a few more. Uh -huh. This one has some setting right here, this compound to the church. It's entitled... The day I wore my grandmother's shoes to school. When we boys were growing up in the village, most of us had three pairs of shoes. Home shoes, school shoes, and church shoes. You never mix them up. So one day my school shoes mash up. And my grandmother lent me my church shoes for a day or two. While she waiting on the boat to come from St. Thomas. What kind of boat? The sloop. The Joan of Arc was there and she used to go like Monday and come a Friday or a Saturday. So she sent me West End a Saturday wearing my nice church shoes I gone with a bouncer and roll on them <laughs> take off my church shoes put them aside strip down to my brief and gone over the waterfront chukun. 
when I come back to put on my clothes and my church shoes, half of my church shoes gone. One of them buy, hide it, or throw it away. You could see me walking from Western Road to Longbe barefooted, through Cocklehorn and all kind of thing. When I reach home, I get blows and I blow my nose. <laughs> when I don't snuffle, my grandmother say, boy, you think you ain't going to school Monday? You go in and look in one of them New York trunk. You know, every family who had people in New York got a trunk or two during October, November for Christmas. And when them open them trunk, they like them come to set up a store. <laughs> my child, my ma say, you're going to see a whitish, greenish, bluish shoe. Try it on and come. Well, I know it had him blue and green and whitish. And it had some string. I put down the shoe. Man, them fit me good. I come out stepping. Because I'm got heel. You think I could have tell my grandmother I ain't wearing them shoes? <laughs> Which path you gonna live? <laughs> you stupidity? <laughs> well, she said them is why you're wearing school Monday morning. Monday morning come. And I got on my shoes and my calf them begin to hurt now. Because I'm stretching, right? But I got to put on my shoes to leave home. When I come down the hill, them boy will want to bell, feel like Reuben, foul them in Glenny Hodge and Elroy Hodge. Reuben foul said, Lord, he got on Dolly Stout shoes. But my grandmother had already tell me where them are by in years to come. You, 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 you have got so many shoes, you ain't gonna know what to wear, right? <laughs> so I went to school happily with my shoes. I ease them off a little <laughs> to play wrong doors before the bell ring. But when the bell rang, I have to put on my shoes. According to which class you're in your lineup? <laughs> what primary five, primary four, three, two, etc. The bigger children behind. I hear all of them eye looking me and all of these eye looking me. Why you watch? I felt so bad. The principal at the door, you are from Eastern Raymond Penn, a tall man. And he used to wear some short pants with leggings. <laughs> My child, I gone and said, Miss Principal, the children are laughing at me. You know. He said, Why? My shoes. When he looked down, he laughed too. <laughs> the man cracked a laugh. Well, if he laugh, and them laugh, I like keeping on my shoes. I had to wear them for a week till when my school shoes came from St. Thomas. I think I'm going to give you one more. Okay. Here this one. The U.S., the Danish West Indies, which now we call the U.S. Virgin Islands, 
and the British Virgin Islands all had a close relationship. At one time, on this side, we had three types of currency spending. We had the Danish money, we had the English money, and then the American money. It was because of our trade with the US Virgin Islands or the Danish West Indies. I had a great grandfather called Captain Stephen who lived at Windy Hill. And he had some sloops and stuff. And you know, if you go to St. Thomas and if there's an epidemic of some, ki of some kind, you couldn't come straight back to the islands. You had to stay in the channel for about four to five days as a precaution or like you were in an incubator ensuring that that disease was not it's called quarantine. He came and his boat is off big thatch in the gut. But this fella had a girlfriend just Sunday. So he broke the quarantine and gone just Van Dyke to see this girl. My child, he brought a brand new pair of shoes for the girl. And she's so anxious to show off these shoes. Roof at Sutter Joshua, the people going from Joshua Lake to Tartola, they came to Carrot Bay. And when she reached Carrot Bay, somebody saw with a brand new pair of shoes over her shoulder. My mama, will, will you get there? <laughs> Captain Stephen brought it for me last night. <laughs> the news gone now. Captain Stephen broke the quarantine. And the news reached and wrote. On that time, it had one policeman. All the other people were supplementary support constables. A few days later, the one policeman end up Windy Hill on a horse to give Captain Stephen a summons to move to Rotong, come to arrest him. The Captain Stephen said, if to you alone, I'm saying, you better get some more, right? <laughs> so he knew he ain't got no more. But the fellow went and he got about a dozen constables from around the island. And they're all on their horses. Will you say he ain't walking Rotong? He had a horse named Britannia. Go up. He said, send one of them fellows up there. Bring down the horse and sell it up. Let's, let's go. So he's going down now. And those fellows, as they walk into, ride into town, making up jingles on Captain Stephen. Old Captain Stephen was in for the slaughter, had to broke the quarantine, he couldn't keep his water. All kind of thing. All kind of thing. Lord of mercy. They're having fun. And Captain Stephen, when they reached Joe's Hill, it seemed like Joe's Hill was a populated area coming up from Rotong. People lived on the side of the hill. And um, the fellow who was in charge was a, 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 a corporal. He wanted Captain Stephen to dismount and to walk down like a prisoner. A fella upside Joe's hill pulley carabin. A carabin is a long rifle. And he tell the corporal, Stephen ain't guilty till when he's tried. He ain't walking down the tongue. Every man ride down tongue. Well, my child, I'm throw a fine on him for $400. $400 and they're going to seize the boat and everything. His wife was called Patient Stephen. Well, we're patient going to find $400. She only had two. You know, the captains come and they throw money in the chest. After trip after trip, she had about $200. And where was she going to get two more hundred? She had a good friend on the same Jasper Day, the Coakley family. Went to Cane Garden Bay, got two fellows to row across to um, Mrs. Coakley. When Mrs. Coakley saw her coming, she said, My mama, I know where you're coming. Look in there, take what you want. 
Her husband was a boat captain too. She took 200 and she leave many 200 more. Came back, reached Rotong the next day to bail her husband. You didn't have to be guilty long time. You would have been out on the street walking. The walls in Rotong would have been colored white. And the street would have been clean like a whistle. That's how prisoners were treated in those times. You didn't have to be pronounced guilty or what. Once you were in prison, the next day you would be on the street keeping it clean. Thank you. That's enough. That's enough. I got something to tell you. Okay. Give it up for Don't move. Give it up for Teacher Elmo. I just want to tell you the first story I told, right? <coughs> About the wedding and the stuff. Uh -huh. Keep her from my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Keep her from my uncle, okay? Well, you all have heard from the storytellers. So good night, everybody. Good night. All the stories that Mr. Stout told, I can tell them back again. <laughs> which wouldn't really make much sense. And then Cousin Jenny Wheatley announced to you all that as a pen from East End. That was, that was her first story. And that's no lie. I am a pen from East End. I'm not from Seacoast Bay. I'm not from West End. Okay. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> In my older days, when you had to sit down and listen to your grandparents or your guardian or whoever, raise you. Sometimes you, they chase you out of the room so you don't hear the full gist of the story. But there was a lot of story told, some that I could repeat and some that I will not. I will not. But I, I want to ask the question to the older people within the audience tonight. If anybody know about the, the Bud Mother, Anybody know the story about the bird mother? Okay. As far as I know, birds does get birds and they'll be chicken. But when a, a woman how to get bird chicken, that's not a good thing. And it is not a fable and it's not a Nancy story. It's a true story. This young woman was married to a young man. And they live in a neighborhood where there were other young people who was married like themselves. And as the years passed by, the other neighbors around would have children. But they didn't have any children. So they wanted, this lady wanted a child of her own. I was told as a child it was a sin to rob the birdness. <laughs> now I couldn't understand why it was a sin to rob a birdness because I used to search for every birdness and check every egg. But I never used to take them out. I wanted to see where them hatch because I didn't know how an egg used to hatch. So I would go every afternoon and check the nest till when I see the gutter pick in the, in the egg and scoop around till when that little chicken come out. But if the bird catch me, you know I in trouble. <laughs> so this lady, she didn't have any children and she wanted a child of her own. In this BBI, we only had one commissioner, one doctor, and his name was Commissioner Whelan and Dr. Whelan. 
So that was the situation we was in. So one time the lady decided within herself, she said, I gotta get a child anyhow. She right now she was a little more educated than the man. So she wrote herself a letter. And she went in tongue. And when she went back home, she carried the letter to the man. Now she know the poor man can read the letter. That was the advantage. She sit down and she read the letter. She getting a baby, she's six months pregnant. And the doctor say he mustn't touch her. So now the poor man, he had no other choice than to sleep on the other side of the bed. So she could go on with her pregnancy. But you forget that it's nine months it'll carry children in. And she was going for a whole year. <laughs> and he wonder well when this child gonna born. Well, he had to go to ground where no why we call plantation today were the ground in those days. You go, you prog your potato, your yam, whatever. So he went to ground and he leave her home. The neighbors didn't see her for the morning. So it was neighborly in those days, if you ain't see your neighbor, to go to see what happened to your neighbor. So this one gentleman was passing and he didn't see the house open, so he went and he called neighbor, neighbor, you're sick? Mmm. Mmm. He gone and he said, neighbor, what do you? She want to go to hospital. She getting her baby. Now, it didn't have an ambulance. It didn't have anything to get this woman from where she was living. She was living up a hill. And the guy take her road down. It wasn't people's hospital. It was cottage hospital. They had to take her there. How you going to get her there? Well, they take a sheet. And they're going to pull her in the sheet. You know what I mean, Paula? Reverend Simo go hold one end. Brother Webb go hold another. Brother Lloyd go hold a third. And Brother Elmo go hold the other. So there's four ends you have now. And she, they roll her into it. You know it ain't easy to carry a bun on your head up the hill and down the hill. And they have to carry this heavy woman from up the hill where she was living. Cottage Hospital. Well, when she was going, she walked with her young boy then. When she reached the hospital now, and the doctor examined the woman, she was never pregnant in her life. But there she had two baby boys. And to the dead, our woman dead and call her the board mother. And it is not a lie because I knew the woman and I knew her husband. So that was the story of the bird mother. Please don't rob the bird nest. Leave the young boy them alone. Okay? Good. Sister Jenny talk about digging up the, the money and brother Elmo talk the same thing. Well, let me tell you. It had a man come here, Tatola, by the name of Dennis Bailey. And he was all over the place with a song that it was a rod and some other story. And he was songing for money. And right in front, the road where I was living, when he sung there, ting ring, money ring off. Well, you hear what I tell you? Every Western man, every Taurus man was there that night. And them dig. And they dig. And I tell you, them dig. When them get down to the iron stone, them because the, the stone and what I'm finding now were rusty. So they know they were down on the chase. Well, hear what I tell you? When they reach down on the chest, them say, Lord, what a big chest. Everybody now prepare to go take up the chest. 
But them only turn them eyes on the time them look back, just gone. Welcome back, every man fall down. Who ain't fallen? The whole couldn't find them house. I know one particular man, Darrell, he got where you see the towers. He walk inside a definitely he house. <laughs> when the Jumbi ain't give you the money, leave it alone. It is no lie. This little BVI loaded with money. Where I live right now, I live in on money. Leave that alone. <laughs> Leave it alone. It wasn't given to anybody. Leave it alone. Cousin Jenny talk about Jumbi. <laughs> well, here I will tell you. Before USBI, when it was Danish Virgin Islands, before you come USBI, all of that, all of people um, used to go to St. Thomas go walk. And it had Jumbi on the wall like peas. <laughs> Wherever you turn, you were bringing up into Jumbi. And this man leave all the way Bonfield. And he decided to walk the country. And he was going before he reached Palibog. He meet a man there. He said, Mister, what time it is? He said, When I leave hell to a half past three. <laughs> man take off his life. <laughs> Poor man nearly dead. When he get by the bridge, he meet a man there leaning over the bridge. The man tired how he runs so. He he said, Mister, you got a light. He say your city is like a these. The man when he teeth at time he say you ever city like a these. Well, the man nearly dead at the time he reached the country faint away because he was running for his life. While he was running going, another man said, "Where you running going? I coming too." So that was Jumbi story. In them days, here in this little BVI, woman used to quarrel. Lord, them used to quarrel. And when them start to quarrel, them ain't had no end. Well, them will tell you when them give you the piece of coal for you. Them tell you when them lend a little bit of brown sugar. Them tell you the last little bit of lie them give. And them cousin. Well, I know two women. They well in there now because they cover up the well. In order to put through the road to come wrong here, Jumbi got. And the two women were living wrong here. So they had to go to the well every morning to get water because we wasn't fortunate to have a cistern. Now, as a child, before I mind my own business and come to school, knowing that when I reach by that school day, I got meet Lincoln Hodge with a leather strap. I stopped down along the road by the well to listen to these women. And them quarreling. And them quarreling. This one put on her bucket. The next one put on the bucket. The woman, the one said, don't touch my bucket. The one said, don't touch my bucket. But now you guys dip the water out of the well. But how you don't get the well? So there them was and them quarreling and them quarreling. Well, the one woman gets so hot, she said, if you touch my bucket this morning, we shake the hands of fellowship round the throne in hell. I don't know. How they won't get a do. But when I hear that I take off, I take off and I make sure that I get here, Jumbi got. Well, when I reach Jumbi got, Lincoln Hodge was right there with the leather strap. It was not easy. But that's how life was those days. Sister Jenny talked about the flower bag. Who here wear a flower bag? Anybody here wear a flower bag? Well, let me tell you about flower bag. When I come to school, they will tell you, you eat the flower and you wear the bag. That time I had on a flower bag pantalette with a, with a, with a lace down by the foot, two strap up across my back. How I get a bathroom, I don't know. But I had to have it on. Then I had on a shift, and I had on a chemise, and I had on a coat, and I had on a frock. That was my lifestyle to come to school, flower bag. 
But I learn my name still. I learn my name. Storytelling was a part of children life in those days. As I said before, many stories were told that I would not repeat. But I can just give you this one here about a man used to walk about and tell people you are a setter. Now you know why is a setter? A setter, we now have chiropractors. So we go to get our joints and our bones and whatnot fixed and put together. But it had some people in the country who used to walk around setting. Them set from your big toe to your head. But let me tell you when they're going to set you. <laughs> Lord, you know. You used to have to go in the house, then close up the house that time to a one chamber in a hall. So every little chink one got a little air to come in. Them chink that up with a piece of lodging. And them close the blind and you in there and they're going to rub your toe. But it Think about it, and that was the bad part. If them rub your toe, you got to take off your whole clothes. What my clothes got to do with any part else on my body? I have no idea. But that's what you had to do. So this man went around and he went to this woman to set her. <laughs> he gone in. The woman gone in, he got cast a nut. Hey, many people know why he's cast a nut. He got some lad, which was a hog lad. And he got a flambo because he got a warm, the cast a nut bush and rub the lad on the bush to toy up the body when he done rub. Well, this man was in there and he was in there. And he was in there quite a long time. Well, you could imagine what went on in there. So when he did surface, the husband said, Well, Mr. So-and-so, what wrong with my wife? He said, my dear Mr. So-and-so, she's spraying in her stomach, and she's spraying in her stomach wide open. <laughs> Figure from that what went down in there. So be careful when you're going to go rub. And who going to rub you? Because your stomach might be spraying and it might be wide open. Okay? All right. I can't, I cannot go back to Mr. Stout's to read them. So I'm going to just leave them alone. My stories are some of them you ain't want to hear, and some I, I can't tell. <laughs> As a child, anyhow, I used to live with my grandfather. <laughs> Lord, I must send the victory down. <laughs> you had, you ain't had no bed. Them had a bed. It was a high bed. You got to almost put. A step to get up on that bed, how high it was. And the bed was make up. It had some, they call them lads before you put up the bed. But they were bowed. Some long bowed, put across, cross, cross. And then after that, them lay a thing of lodging. Why is lodging? All the old clothes where you don't wear, then wash them clean and then put them up on top there. Then they put up a bed. What the bed was? A grass bed. Lord, I'm out of grass. I cut down bed. Rub the pan. I still got finger. All right. Cutting grass to full bed and pillow. But I still here. And I had to do that. But then when night come now, I had some lodging too. It was three hours living with my grandfather and his wife. One somewhere in the States, the other one deceased. We were three cousins, we grass three sisters. When you go sleep the night time. Whatever that 
place and tap your hairboard begin to fall in your head. There's music down there for you because at bottom and all you could do is hold your head. The bed last them come along and tap your head. It won't easy. But when you get up the man, you can't say nothing, you know. You dare not say nothing we don't talk to. You wasn't so bright, you're out of place. You out of place, you out of order to say when the bed hit you in your head last night. And nobody ain't asking you if you get hit with the boat, so you can't say nothing. You know, sometimes you come out, you got a big bump. But you can't say a word. But I was a wicked little girl at that time. Three of us under the bed sleeping on the lodging. I wet my lodging. And I gonna shop the other two over there. And I gonna make sure sleep over here on the dry side. So when morning come in your hair, Lunku say, I get up. And you come out now. Everybody, Timmy, Timmy, Timmy. Nobody ain't gonna settle them because I'm gonna try out the sea in cold water. Lord have mercy. That was advantage. But them used to do your try in the sea. And you know what I'm saying? Don't piss your bed. Now when you go sleep, or you know what's happening. You know? <laughs> Tell me if you know what's happening. The only thing you know is when the boat hit you in the head. So that's all you had. No, you didn't know not that you had done with your bed. So that was part of my life story, but it was good stories, you know. It was a good story. I hear Mr. South talking about the shoes. Hello. I myself had three pair of shoes. One for school, one for church, and the pair for whom were the pair were done without from school. So that make it three. I get cockle horn, I get kosher, I get prickle pear. All of them in my foot. And I want to tell you now, at the age of nine, my mother died. But my aunt tried, she took the best care of me. That's why I'm still here tonight. And she used to try her best, you know. But you know, your own child is your own child. And she tried. Whatever mistake I make, I make it on my own. Not that she didn't try. So one day now, she used to deal with a man in town by the name of Mr. De Castro. She had a cousin name is uh, Donna one used to work with Miss, Miss, Mr. De Castro, where is now cell five. That was the De Castro store. So she used to deal with them and she would buy a little pair of shoes for me now and again when the pair getting wear down. Well, one day she decided to give me a brand new pair to come to school. She see me shine off, yeah. But like I wasn't so accustomed to wear the shoes to school because when you come to school sometimes, some children got on shoes, some ain't got on. So you want to join the gang, you take off yours. And when, and when you hear Mr. Green, the superintendent, come in, check your foot, them shining with coconut oil. That were the, that were the cream at the time. And that brand new little pair of shoes, hmm, Lord, you know. The belfry gone, so it can't carry the toy in. <laughs> but the school still there, the church, the school still there. I could tell you, me custom to be running up and down through the schoolyard with no shoes. Me take off the shoes. But let me tell you what kind of shoes them was. You see the man them that wear some hollow blade boots? Them is why it was. It was no fancy shoes. Well, I took off mine. And I rest them on the bell free. And I went go play. Because, well, everybody playing, we jumping, we checking ball, we doing all the rest of it. And one of, it, and one of the things when I was coming to school, I was, I was strong. I was everything you could have talked about that calm on this black cow. But I never mind. I, I, I went along with it all the time. <laughs> Who had no me would tell you I was a little ruffian. And I survived. Well, when school was over the afternoon, I, I grabbed my book because my lunch bag was a paper bag. 
And when them girl you lunch the morning, hello. Before you reach Zion Hill, you don't eat that bong boy Ben. <laughs> and when twelve o'clock come and everybody is eating their lunch, I could have climbed like a rat and I climb every coconut tree Ben had down there. Pay coconut, bust them out, that's my lunch. You ain't know why I eat for lunch today. But I eat my lunch too. So all I had I had with my book, I ain't had no lunch bag. And I, go, and I gone home the afternoon. When I gone home to my aunt, my aunt said, Madeline, wear your shoes. Lord have mercy. I got walk from West End, back Zion Hill, come look for my shoes on the belfry. Well, I gonna see them judgment morning. <laughs> because up to this present day, I ain't find my shoes. But another man who went with my shoes. Because he was a wicked man. He used to be up and down with a corn bag telling you if he catch you, he gonna put you in it and he gonna carry a spoon. Huh? And I was afraid of that man. And he used to take his oil and turn it up. And when he turn out his oil, you run for your life. So, I ain't get my shoes, but all is well that ends well. Last of all, on me, I'll, I'll be on me because I can't tell you about everybody else. <laughs> One of the women I was living right down there was my good friend. <laughs> a matter of fact, she was the mother of two of my brother and sister, two of my siblings. And when you come to school, it had more. more fence round this place then if you had a fort because my uncle Hughie had owned that land over there and he had a sweet mango tree up there and you know what children is when the mango then begin to ripe and Achibel Hodge had owned that land up there and it had a lovely guinea tree up in the corner sweet like anything and when they begin to bear them warning you don't go on them land. Now you gonna tell children don't go on land where a mango in Guinea? Worst thing. Well anyhow, we used to go anyhow, thief a chance, go on the mango tree, stand up on the man wire, pick a mango them. Sometimes he in there and when you hear rocks start to pilch, you better run for your life. You stand up on the wire up there at you, at you a little coiner. He used to say, Are you get on, mama? Are you get on? <laughs> Don't broke down the wire in the tree. So we were a little uh, good with him. But one day when I went to look mango and look in up, I tear my frock. <laughs> now I in trouble. Anybody had ever had a frock tear with a wire? You know what kind of tear it is? It's so and so. That's why it is. Now I can go home to my aunt then and tell she I get my frock tear because she nothing on a wire in the school yard. So Lord have mercy. I think on what I gonna do. I went down the road. Now the, the woman go to knowing that she was the mother of my brother and my sister. I asked her, lend me a needle. No, it wasn't Yaya. Yaya, yaya teach all of Yaya, candy them. <laughs> and I, I cover, I cover, I cover a, te, a, a scent with silver foil, shine it down smooth, smooth. <laughs> Buy Yaya, yaya ca, candy with, uh, with a 10 cent silver foil scent. <laughs> okay. Open condition, good for the soul. <laughs> I, I don't ask God to forgive me already. <laughs> but I still remember, so I could talk about it. <laughs> so I want Yaya. I won't tell you who the woman was. Uh, and Yaya had no children, so she had no children for my father. <laughs> so anyway, she lent me the needle in the tread and I saw my frock. Now I feel I clear, man. All is clear because... Me going home, my frock will so in thing. Come back to school next day. Fine, because 
it wasn't like you had a uniform, you had to choose a uniform, you had a frock. When you go home, you hang it up, you let the wind blow it out, you put it on next morning, you come to school. Two days after that, when I went home from school, my aunt called me. She said, come here. I was like, what happened now? I walk in today, tomorrow, if I reach, I reach. She said, Madam, come here. <laughs> well, now I had to straighten up. I, I, I walk, I, yes, Antoine? She said, calling the woman by her name, how much people should I take in a debt to so? I say, <laughs> I say, what? How much people should I take in a debt to so? Calling the woman by her name, I say, I don't know. Me and nobody don't go in there because somebody the woman she don't take in. Nobody to so. She say yes, you're little. Uh-huh. <laughs> but you went go saw your frock there day before the I say Lord. <laughs> so when you hear people say long grass the carry news, don't doubt them. Long grass go carry news. Be careful what you say when you see a long grass. Pass it by because when I tell me that when I see long grass, me used to pass long grass and go my way. Have a blessed night, everybody. Let's hear it for her. Let's hear it. And you, you would if you don't have a program, you wouldn't know, right? I call. But I stood before her by mistake because I had on the glasses and all of that. <laughs> so she told me when I was heading that way, she said, You call Mr. Stout. No, what I going to say? Because I have what I'm thinking he was saying, I was going to say. <laughs> but you hear anything what he said, she said? No. She did her own story, had her own truths. She had her own truths, right? <laughs> That's right. So we want to thank them all, Sister Whitley. Over there, give it up. Teacher Elmo, as well as Sister Madeline. I think we learned quite a bit. We had some laughs, we loosened up a little bit, right? And we were, we're glad that we're here. How the basket looking? Where the. You looking okay? Okay, glad. Thank you for putting in and, sh and, and contributing towards the the bulletin board. Sister Harriet will now come and... Okay, she coming. Okay. Okay, where is she coming? Let me tell you something. <coughs> I, long, you know, when, well, way back in my, 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 my mother, she used to cook for my uncles and so, right? And then we'd have to take the food up to the little up to a bush, they passed the seventy church, and then every evening. So this evening she went, she and my sister, right? <coughs> so they put the food in through the window, you know, they board house to put it in through the window. So they heading out the way, coming down the street. They didn't take the shortcut back, they went to the road. They come out by George Corner. Only Ali would know what talking about. And a couple more people, right? So my sister see my mother up on the Okay, so they had the, the barbed wire, see? So she see her like this, right? Walking. Then she see her, she see my mother pulling and hauling, right? And she wanna know what happened. So my mother ain't stopping, you know? She just pulling, she tears, she turn off. So when she reached home, she asked my mother, what happened? My mother say, had a black, she see a black thing on the fence, right? Next morning, them gone up and they, they, a piece of corn bag. <laughs> she tear up her whole side, trying to get away from this imaginary Jumbi. <laughs> but Jumbi is so thick now. You ready, Sister Harriet? Yeah. I saw quite a bit in my young days, you know. This way I got card over your face, that would happen. Good evening again. I somehow feel like this storytelling only for old people. So who tell I I don't have a story to tell?
story for old people. I got a story to tell too. I want to hear it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, this is a true story, you know. I ain't saying them real story, what, what we hear wasn't true. I gotta listen carefully. It's true and it's serious. And it's funny too. So, me and my sister. And I, you know why I'm glad I'm telling this story now? Because she right here, but she ain't not telling it. She named Minnie. So I listen now, listen good. So it was night, he had no current. So me and my sister were home in the bedroom. It's a long time ago. I think we were in primary school. Right, Minnie? So listen. So she had wanted me to come go with her to buy some ice cream. <laughs> Are you listen? I got to listen good you know. So she had wanted me to go there to buy ice cream. So I said, man, me able, me able to go. So then she said, okay, you must come. I gonna go and I gonna buy it and I gonna give you none. I said, okay, so, so she went and she get an ice cream from Carrot Bay. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know Carrot Bay used to sell ice cream? So we went to get ice cream. She went to get ice cream, Caribbean. She come back, she was so happy. I think it was vanilla flavor. It was that right? Yes. So she went, she get ice cream, she was eating it. So I said, give me some no. She said, you're gonna sit down there, you're gonna watch me eat it all. I ain't giving you none because it won't come with me. So, uh, sorry I ain't had a cup to demonstrate it. But she done eating the ice cream, eating the ice cream. When you look, she see something had in the ice cream. She said, this ice cream full of ice. I said, what do you mean it's full of ice? You know some ice cream that got ice in it when it freeze up too long on the freezer? She said, man, she eating this thing full of ice. She going deeper, 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 eating her ice cream. Mind me, you're not yet, you know. When you look, a plate of false teeth inside of her ice cream. Well. And when I tell you, this ain't a pure, pure plate of false teeth, you know. This false teeth, cause I see to my two eyes, them. I wasn't wearing glasses at that time. But the, the false teeth had in a gold pad in the front. And she said, oh mother, mother come quick. Look what a woman sell me a plate of false teeth. She said, I feel like I go vomit. I want vomit. She spit, she hawk, she spit, she hawk. But she don't suck up on this, 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 this fast it. <laughs> and when you look, when you look, she had to care back. No, wait, I ain't going there yet. She said, Mother, the woman sell me a plate of false teeth. She said, What? What do you mean she sell a plate of false teeth? So the neighbor we were living behind her by Molly, his name Sam. He always used to come down with a flashlight. Cause he had no current. So she said, Sam, you can spot your light on this thing here. Let me see what it is. <laughs> when he's taking his flashlight and he's spotting it. Yeah. But you want to look at a false seat for true now. <laughs> a whole plate. <laughs> so my mother said, take it and carry it back to her and show her what. And you tell she what she sell you. You go show her what she sell you. Her false seat. <laughs> so listen now. We went down Carrot Bay now to care back this false teeth to the owner. <laughs> so I went with her then, because this one you was here. This one melee, cause I had to see what going down with my sister and this woman false teeth. So 
because she went with a false teeth down carrot bay. And she went into the woman. She done dead with her soul. She said, Miss, you sell me a plate of false teeth in the ice cream. The woman said, What you say? She said, Well, child, you know how long I was looking for these teeth? <laughs> She said, you know something, and this is how soft she was stuck. You know something, you know I always would keep them in my bosom. <laughs> so she said, so maybe, maybe when I was bending over, they dropped in and I didn't know. So you want me to give you back the $2.50? <laughs> well, yes. So she accepted the money back and we went home. And from then, I can't tell you when we went back by that place to buy ice cream because it was too scary. Thank you. Okay. Well, the task and pleasure is certainly mine to give the vote of thanks on behalf of the president and members of the Zion Light, of the Shining Lights of Zion Hill Methodist Church. First of all, I give God thanks for blessing us with such fair weather this, to, this evening to enable to enjoy this wonderful evening of local folklore. Although I give thanks on behalf of the Shining Lights, I thank the Shining Lights for coordinating this evening of storytelling, bringing together three of the territory's master storytellers. A heartfelt thank you is extended to Mrs. Jenny Wheatley, affectionately known as Teacher Jenny, Mrs. Madeline Blinden, and Mr. Brother Elmo Stout, also known as Teacher Elmo, for consenting to enthrall us with humorous and engaging stories. I can attest that some of you, for some of you, especially the younger ones, this evening was the first that you have heard some of the exciting and comical recollection of stories of yesteryear. The oral tradition was a very integral and aspect of the territory's culture, but sadly has taken a back seat with the advent of technology and other competing cultures. It is my fervent hope that we can have more of these activities in an effort to preserve our rich local heritage. I also take this opportunity to extend thanks and appreciation to our mistress of ceremonies, Mrs. Velma Chung, for leading the opening activities and for her poems, Brother Pastor Naaman Chalwa for the provision of our tents and chairs, Mrs. Daisy Durant for chairs, Zion Sound and Zion Hill, Zion Hill Youth Steel Orchestra for the musical entertainment. However, this evening could not have been successful with, had it not been for your presence here. And for this, I extend a very, very warm thank you to all of you for your overwhelming support. I trust that you thoroughly enjoyed yourself as I did and laughed a bit, learned a bit, and reflected a bit. And I trust that you will feel, leave here feeling more fulfilled than you came. Last but not least, I extend a general thank you to all who may have contributed to planning and executing this evening's um, activities. And I hope that this is just the beginning of such an event. So I hope you enjoy the stuff and you continue to enjoy the music of Zion songs, the Zion songs. And as you go to your several home, I wish you God's blessings until we meet again. Let's go. 